Gil, just tell me about your, your cover crops, when you do have a cover crop, or even your natural vegetation. Uh, what, is the, what, are, what is the timing that you use to kill those cover crops? Are there criteria that you have that, that, you, that you use to kill them, and, and how would you kill them? When we plant rye or wheat, we would use Roundup to actually kill the cover crop. And we wait till it's a certain height. It's usually about March. And we, and, and we want to do it when it has time to fully die and lay down on the ground before we actually plant the, the spring crop or the summer crop. Or before we get in with a strip till rig. You don't want to get too tall because it tangles up in the strip till rig. And you want it to get tall enough to actually lay flat on the ground and give us some ground cover. Now the natural vegetation, depending on what's there, we'll use Roundup to kill the, the natural vegetation, but sometimes we'll use Roundup and uh, 2,4-D, depending on what's there and the time of the year, you can't use 2,4-D very late. So we'll put uh, Roundup and 2,4-D in with liquid nitrogen a lot of times and put it out because we're going to put out nitrogen anyway and that's the cheapest form, and um, it does a heck of a job, you know, the, the three of them together. So um, we don't spend any time, any trips that we don't have to do. We don't, we don't, we don't put any, any machine in the field, we don't have to put it in the field anyway. So we can combine trips when we're putting out nitrogen and we can kill our winter vegetation at the same time, that's what we do. It reminds me of just one other question. Uh, you raised the subject. Um, is that uh, when they were using that particular pesticide in some of your neighbor's fields, killing off all the vegetation on the field, it was also killing off the vegetation in the grass waterways. Can you kind of just tell us that story very quickly? A, a lot of people had waterways planted with Bermuda grass to uh, control erosion. And when we started, they started using uh, Roundup on cotton and the drift would kill all the grass in the waterways so then they had a problem again with the waterways eroding and they were having to, to deal with that and unsuccessfully I'm afraid. Um, I don't know how we're going to get around that because it's always going to be drift when you're using Roundup and grass doesn't, doesn't um, do well with uh, Roundup on it. But I think we're going to have to replant the waterways with something maybe even every year. Pesticides are your last resort uh, before you go ahead. So you have a number of strategies. For instance, I don't know what you do in terms of choosing seed, seed qualities, uh, possibly seed resistance to certain diseases, certain pests. I wonder if you can elaborate on that, that for us, please. We started spending more money on seed treatment. That would be the first place we started and it's paid off for us. We have a whole lot better stand. It depends on what we're using, you know, whether it be wheat seed or soybean seed or cotton seed. Never have treated corn seed very much, but we're looking at treating corn seed uh, to get a better stand, a, a, a better start. And that's worked out real well for us. When we grew cotton in the old days, they sprayed cotton sometimes every three days. We couldn't control boll weevil, we couldn't control the worms. So when boll weevil eradication came in and was uh, uh, fully implemented, then we quit spraying for boll weevils and we just sprayed for worms. We went to spraying every five or six days. And then when BT cotton came in, we didn't spray for worms. Uh, you know, we, we barely spray, spray for anything except stink bugs. And stink bugs are the only one now that we really can't control because nobody can find them. They can find them where they used to be. But they're working on some technologies now to, con to actually being able to smell stink bugs and spray them. But, uh, and, and, the, and the, um, the engineer, the bioengineered cotton, or the genetically engineered cotton, I should say, is uh, coming up with some new stuff that'll kill any sucking insect. So that'll take care of stink bugs. But as the, uh, the uh, GMO cotton has come into play, you know, our insecticide gone almost to nothing and I think that's why some of the wildlife is thriving so well now because we we hardly use any insect, insecticide on anything anymore and that's just mm -hmm. 
GMO cotton. Uh, we don't need, you don't need to spray for worms, and uh, we may spray for worms in soybeans. We never spray for worms in corn, and um, um, some people do, but we, we haven't found the economic advantage of it. And besides, I just time consuming and expensive, and having to use an airplane on full grown corn, you can get um, BT corn that worms won't eat. So I, I think the way to control insects is really in the genetic altered plant versus the insect itself. Uh, when you were talking about treated corn and treated seeds, was that uh, treated against fungi uh, when they start It's up? fungi and, uh, and insect, insects or nematodes or whatever, you know. We used to use a lot of temic and uh, we've gotten to where we can treat cotton seed don't need to use a lot of timid. That's the only really dangerous insecticide that we use anymore. Everything else is about gone. Um, but the, the genetically altered plant is the really the, the way to go with it. It's, it's cut the number of, of uh, the pipe worm populations down so much. So, so even though you, you're not spraying cotton, you're not spraying soybeans either because the, the moth flights are not as big. The, the, Population of insects themselves are not as great. They don't get out of hand. Do you have to pay any particular attention to um, uh, your, your seed and looking at, is there, are there grades of seed where you have less and less um, weeds in them or, or weed seeds in them? Is that something that pays off? Is there a payoff between really, really pure seed and Really, really bad seed. Well, one of the things that's happened with uh, genetically altered seed is you can't use your old seed anymore. So you, you're really using new seed. So if you got a new uh, weed problem, all this somebody else's weeds came in the seed, usually. But in the old days, we, you know, we used everything over. We used the cotton seed again. We had it treated or delinted and replanted cotton seed, wheat. Soybeans. We never really use corn because it's a hybrid, but now we don't hardly use any any seed over again at all. Maybe a cover crop seed or whatever. Okay, so the content of the seed is not really an issue anymore. No, but we if we use any seed, we have it cleaned. Uh, well, how do you have seed cleaned? We, they have machines that clean it. They, just, they go through and blow all the weed seed out and save the. They have the right size screens and all it. You go through a cleaner. We've we've sent wheat through cleaners before, and they'll, they'll clean it and they'll treat it. But the uh, we we found out that fungicides really pay off in cold weather trying to get wheat going, particularly this year. Yeah. yeah. This is when you send your equipment out into certain fields, when you bring it back, do you have to hose them down, or is there mm -hmm. a practice that you use to? We have uh, all our harvest equipment. We blow the, all the dust, dust and weed seeds and residue off of it every day that we can. We have a big air compressor that we recently got, and we blow them down and get all everything. So we don't want the weed seed to travel from one farm to another. But it makes it, makes it easier to work on machinery and and everything also, and less chance of fires and that kind of problem. But we go over the machines, you know, like peanut harvesters, they get so dirty you can't hardly tell what they are. But we take the compressor and we blow all the dirt off of them every, every morning usually. And the same thing with combines and cotton pickers. We just blow all this trash off and leave it in the field it came from pretty much. That's helped a lot to keep the weeds from traveling around. I see some people with air compressors, but um, I think we're about the only one. So but what you're saying to me is that air compressor is, is worth the investment? Oh yeah, yeah. Especially you buy a used one pretty cheap. And um, those big air compressors, they rent them. And they, they rent them so many hours, they'll sell them. And um, they, you know, they're worth the money. <laughs>